Welcome back to Tim Rinpoche's Paranormal Zone. I'm Lee Kim and I will be your host. In this next episode, I am speaking with JP Tong, who's going to share with us many, many stories going way back to 1989. And I say way back because 1989 was a while ago. It doesn't mean that he's old or anything because he's rather sensitive about that, you know. I guess sensitive people just get a little bit paranormal with age, but anyway. So, now we're going to have JP and he's going to tell us several stories that are very, very interesting. And like I always say, whether you believe it or not, whether you've seen it or not. Welcome to JP who is joining me this afternoon to share with you some of his paranormal stories. So, I heard it started like in 1989. Yes, when I was in college in, in New college? York. Yeah. You told me not to review your name and then your, your age and, okay, and things like that. And then you're telling me you're going to college because when you review your age, you review okay. mine. Uh, yeah, that itself is a paranormal experience. Okay, so 1989, so what happened? Um, it was um, my first week, well, I, actually my two weeks into college. And when I first moved into this apartment, um, it was... It felt very, very uncomfortable because... Were my, you alone or was I it was like alone. a few people sharing at the apartment? Kind of thing? It was a few people but they were strangers. Mm. Okay, so I shared a three-room apartment and I took up a, a bedroom. But my bedroom face, faced a, another building. So it is really dark there. So what happened was um, I couldn't sleep for, for, for weeks because I, I just felt that there's something in my room. And I, and, and I couldn't explain because I've never seen anything paranormal or an, in anything of Even when nature. you looked in the mirror? Yeah, funny. <laughs> I thought I was funny. So, um, so what happened was um, then I would wake up three, four times every night, which was very weird. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, to, back then I just thought that mm, perhaps I'm not used to a to, to, to new apartment that I moved mm -hmm. in. So, I, so what I did was I moved my, my bed next to the window thinking that you know, with, with better feng shui, you know, perhaps I could sleep better. So um, then there was one night again, you know, I woke up and it was Wait. like, I remember it was like... Hold on, when you said you feel something in the room, what, what senses did it trigger? Was it sight? Was it sound? Was it smell? It was just, it was just a feeling that somebody's watching me and it was in that mm. corner of that room, in, you know, in that, in that corner right there that um, something's Beautiful. watching me, I was like, you know, I just negated it that, you know, maybe it's, it's just, you know, I'm just being paranoid. <clears throat> so then what, what happened was one night I woke up and I said, oh no, you know, because the following day I had a class at eight o'clock. And right before I was going to turn around and go to sleep, then I saw this light. It was like a, it was like a silhouette on my carpet because, you know, I was just sleeping like this. Silhouette like in a blob or in the as, shape of something? You know, as um, it was in the shape, okay? A silhouette on my carpet and I was like, that's strange because even though my window is right next to me, I've yeah. never seen any light coming through because right next, it's like 10 feet away building is another building. building yeah. So I was, I was just looking at it and I was like, hmm, how strange. And my roller blinds were down. Mm -hmm. So I took my hand up against the window to see if I see a shadow. So you didn't have any source of light that could cast a shadow onto your carpet? No but way. Oh no, you. So, so the next thing was like, okay, maybe, you know, my, <clears throat> my neighbor's building turned on the light all of a sudden. I mean, you know, all these thoughts were coming. You were trying to make sense out <clears throat> of make it. Make sense out of okay. it. So when I put my hand up against you know, the, the window and I didn't see my, you know, the shadow of my hand, I was like, that's weird. So I took another good look and I noticed that and I realized that, that the light, that the silhouette on the carpet was not on the carpet. It was actually standing up right next to me. Was it like white, black, like a shadow? It was like a white silhouette that you can see through. You know, something like that's smoky? translucent, smoky, yeah, like that. Okay. So, and I, I wasn't freaked out. I mean, that was the first time that I I'm freaking out. <laughs> so, and then I took a look and it was shaped as a person. It was very tall, I think six feet around, very broad shoulders. And I was like, okay, so... Is, and, the, and the first thing that came to my house, is that a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> because I expected something more, more gruesome than that. Then I just looked at it and I looked at it and I stared at it and 
waiting for for it to do something. And no, nope, nothing. Nothing happened. He just stood there for the longest time. And I looked, and so you had a staring match. A staring match, and nothing happened. Then I just did. Uh, they have eyes. Did you see face nothing. features? It was just a white silhouette. Okay. So that was my first experience. So then I just said, you know, what the heck? I, I'm going to sleep because I, I got a morning class, and that's how I did. So you took a very nonchalant kind of <clears throat> attitude towards your friend. Your roommate. Yes. And and so your sleep was disrupted, but you still continued. And and for for I told my friends about it, and they said, you know, why don't you tell the management? I was like, I'm not going to because in the states, I feel like if I do that, they'll send me to see a psychiatrist instead. They they call in the straight jacket, and then you get strapped to the back. But I learned later on that uh, through another friend who you know who was studying who has been studying there for a few years. She said, oh. Uh, the year before you you moved in, actually, one of the the students uh, committed suicide, mm. and she said, "Why don't you find out? You know where he used to live?" I was like, "No, I'm not going to because I'm going to freak out." So I didn't. I didn't so ask. how long did you actually stay in this room? I stayed for one year. One year. Mm-hmm. One year. What are you dying for excitement? No, because one year and then yes. with sleep disruption and and. But after that, like it was fine. Man. After that, it was fine. And what? Oh. Happened? Then what? Then, I mean, subsequently there were you know a few instances where I would see you know dark shadows running back and forth, you know, and but what? But I didn't really think much about it because it wasn't freaky or anything. But what happened was then I related the story to my friend who visited,、uh, who lived in Boston back then, and she and a group of friends actually stayed over、mm-hmm. the week before I saw this this、um, spirit, and、um, and she was really quiet when I related the story.、Mm-hmm. I said. Hello, are you there? Are you, are, are you freaking out? She said no. I said no. She said yes, I am freaking.、Out. I said oh, okay. I said why? She said oh, do you remember that when we stayed over,、uh, this other friend of ours,、yeah. she 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 was terrified of going into your bathroom, and she always wanted somebody there. I was like yeah, so. You mean when your friends came to visit you <coughs> in New York yes, in yes, this house、yes. in this apartment?、Okay? Yes. And I said yeah, why? And then she said you know that she actually the first time when she when she stayed over she had a very vivid dream. It was very unusual.、Mm. She said it was very real.、Mm. That she was walking back、uh, from Broadway、mm-hmm. to my apartment, and there was this person that kept following her back. And every time she turned around, she couldn't see the face. It was very fuzzy.、Ooh. And she just kept walking, and then she started panicking, and then she ran towards my apartment. <clears throat> and as right before she she entered the building,、um, in her dream she was wearing a talisman.、Mm-hmm. The ones、and、where people put things inside, like protection kind of thing. For protection. Okay. And、uh, that thing just burst into flames. So、on her body. On her body, in the dream. Oh my god! In in the dream. Okay. In the dream. So to her, she, she she、um, took it as that you know as it was a spirit and this kind of neutralized or protected her.、Mm-hmm. And ever since then, she she said, remember every time she she went to the bathroom,、mm-hmm. she needed somebody there. Even when she showered, I was like, okay, I thought it was a girl thing, so I didn't I, said, I didn't think twice. And she said that she freaked out because when I when I.、Uh, Ex- when I、uh, described、uh-huh. how the silhouette、uh-huh. looked like to her, it matched exactly what the girl told her. Which was the shadow following the shadow, her back.、Oh、a guy, broad shoulders, and all that. So, so.、Yeah. So, so in a- in actual fact, someone had actually committed suicide in that room prior to you taking it up. I don't know whether it's that room, but from that building, he jumped、mm-hmm. off the building. Yeah. So perhaps he was visiting me. He probably was lonely or something.、Um, okay, so so eventually you moved out. So throughout the year after that that、um, incident, there were, <coughs> there were different on、uh, and off, off and off, come and go, come and go. You know, I mean, there were instances where I I couldn't get up. You know, I was pressed down, and I and I couldn't speak and I couldn't move. That 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 freaked me out a bit.、And、all in this same, in the same room. room. And then I swear there must be something really <laughs> wrong with him. He's either really pushing his luck, or he himself is a paranormal <laughs> thing. No,、uh, and then、uh, there were many, there were a few instances whereby there was a smell in my toothbrush. It, it, it was very strange. What kind of smell?、Um, Alcohol? No,、nope. it was a decay. You know, like、um, very earthy, musky. When clothes don't dry, kind no, of. No, it's like when. When a lizard dies in in your room, like for a week, and then that it, it, it leaves that stench, 
It's like a decay of flesh. Oh, the only thing I have lizard dying and leaving a stench <laughs> is when it gets caught in the aircon, and then the aircon really smells. But anyways, that's just it's something like that. You know that that, that, it's very that strong, decay. Is it? Yeah, but this is um, it's like a whisk of it. So when you smell it, it's like that's. It so, reminds me of that. So every time you brush your teeth, you. There was only once, so I changed it, and then the, the second day it happened again. So you stopped brushing your teeth. No, so what I did was I took my toothbrush from the from a bathroom and I put it in my room because okay. I thought that you know perhaps my mm. my <laughs> housemate played a joke Didn't on me like you. <laughs> and used my toothbrush to brush the uh, toilet seat or, or or whatever. So I hid it into my room and nothing happened. But when I related this story to to my aunt who you know who lives in the, in, in the states as well, and she has a lot of these encounters mm. and she said, oh I don't need to come to your to your apartment definitely. It's confirmed. I said, "Why do you say that?" She said, "Because when she used to live in Singapore when mm -hmm. she was a kid, she had similar experiences, whereby there's this spirit uh, that always loves to scare her. It's this old man, and he would be heaving and heaving and heaving, and uh, he would go to her her bathroom and start brushing his teeth. And in the morning, there's he, there'll, there'll be a st this stench. And when I described that smell, it matched with what she went through when she was a kid." Oh dear. So she's like, oh, JP, you know, definitely, it's it's haunted. I was like, okay, so what should I do? She's like, mm, nothing. <laughs> so you never did anything like, you know, do some major, no. you know, burning of incense and no. burning of prayer yes, papers, was, no. like you know, until the fire alarm goes. You did nothing. So you're very nonchalant about the whole thing. Um, yeah, because I wasn't into any religion, mm -hmm. and I told my mom about it. So what she did was she she curried me a Chinese talisman, mm -hmm. and that's all I did. Wow, scary. Yeah. Okay, and you stay. I mean, and I the, stayed for the and you year. stayed for the whole year. That, and then I moved out <laughs> because I didn't want to go to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> and did, did your friend go with you? No, I. He stayed there. You think? Maybe I think so. I Were think there any subsequent stories of new people coming in that you heard? No, I didn't yeah. ask because after that I moved out of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that you've heard JP's story, to me kind of creepy, scary, and living there one year with this friend called the Shadow Man. Well, like I always say, whether you believe it or not, whether you've seen it before, I am very sure that many of you out there can relate to JP's story when you move into a new place and you have something there that's not part of the family. JP has more stories to share with you, which I will be talking to him more, and I'm sure you will love it, so stay tuned for more stories from JP.